I would say, I love you to pieces. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. So long, Granny, until we meet again. Thank you. wanted to teach us the things that she was never able to glean from her own mother. And she taught us a great deal. And I just want to share a few of those lessons and memories. Number one, Granny taught us to share. She always shared her ice cream, and we always knew it was in the deep freezer. We'd come in that house looking for the ice cream. My parents would be like, don't go in that house asking for ice cream. But Granny would be like, that's why I buy that ice cream. It's for them children. Y'all can eat whatever y'all want to eat in this house. Um, Granny taught us book smarts and practical smarts. When I was in elementary school, Granny was quizzing me on the multiplication facts. She knew them better than I did. Um, she could do the sums in her head, and she told us when I was in Texas, they didn't let us write stuff down. We had to do it in our head. Um, she taught us how to pick eggs. All of us go to the store the same way, open up that cart, and make sure all the eggs are intact, because Granny taught us that. Granny had the wherewithal when she was working at VIP. She had two black baskets for the clothes, one for the regular clothes and one for the clothes from VIP. Because she warned us, the clothes will cut you, and I took them for serious. Um, Granny also taught us to support each other. When I was little, I wanted to have earrings or pierced ears like all the other little girls. And my daddy said no. But Granny kept me in ear bobs, and every time I left Vivian, I had my fingernails painted, because every little girl ought to have her nails painted, according to Granny. Um, granny and Papa gave us, they passed out dollar bills every time you got an A on your report card. So who knows what kind of a student I might have become without that incentive. <laughs> she also supported me when I was little. I always got nosebleeds for no apparent reason. So Granny took a penny, she drilled a hole in it, and tied it around my neck. <laughs> and I wore that penny till the string broke. <laughs> maybe I grew out of it, maybe it was the copper in the penny, but the nosebleed stopped. Um, I had asthma when I was little, and uh, Granny tried to give me a chihuahua, but that didn't go over. <laughs> um, Granny also taught us all self-discipline. If you ever were at 1415 Osage Drive and you made up a bed, Granny had them beds on the corner at the bottom crisp, like she had been through boot camp. <laughs> and she wanted you to make the bed up the same way. Same way. Yep. And um, me, Shar, and Brand would be at um, Granny's house, and she'd be telling us, y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Roger and Cedric make up a bed better than y'all, and they boys. <laughs> and I remember thinking in my head, well, Roger and Cedric older than us, they ought to be able to make the bed up better than us. <laughs> but I had sense and home training enough not to say that out loud. <laughs> Granny also taught us the way to get things done. When we had to clean up on Saturday mornings, we had the music going, we were listening to the swap shop, shop and listening to Don't Mess With My Tutu. Um, she just had a way to make it encouraging so we could get it done. Whether your job was to change the trash cans in a little trash or to help her put stuff out on the line, she wanted you to do it well and do it right the first time so you could get done and go outside and play, sit on the porch, watch Soul Train or whatever it was you wanted to do that Saturday. Um, lastly, Granny taught us to be self-sufficient. Granny could make a door stop out of anything. Yeah, I'm talking true. whether it was that's an intricately true. folded magazine, an old that's school true. metal iron, a rock, a statue. She could do anything to keep the doors open at 1415. Um, when Shari and I were little, sometimes when there were a lot of people at the house, we would have to sleep in the back room that used to be on Petroy's room. But that also happens to be the room that was farthest away from Granny and Papa's. So we would be back there, Granny would have tucked us in tight, you know, with all the covers pulled tight, and the big vape rub on you, and she would tell you, night, night, and we were like, well, we're scared to sleep back here. So our Granny told us what you need to do is you ball your fist up really tight, and then you put them under the pillow, and if somebody comes to get you, then you'll be ready. <laughs> so 
that's what we did. <laughs> and lastly, Granny taught taught me how to taught all of us how to deal with bullies. When I was little, I was a little chubby, and she told me, if somebody says you're chubby, you tell them I may be, but I can diet, and you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> I remember that, man. Yeah, yeah. She was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, uh, Granny's life has taught us all to be strong. And I know that the God who strengthened oh, Granny, a woman who was raised without a mother, but managed to mother seven children of her own yeah. and influence the lives of countless other yeah. folks. Yeah. I know that this God will continue to strengthen us because our temporary loss is certainly God's eternal gain. Mm. daughter of Ruby Webb and I probably should have prepared a little bit better and wrote this down but I felt the need to just speak from my heart. Um, I have a lot of memories of my grandmother as a child but the one thing that sticks out to me because like Rosalind said we were always together <laughs> and so <laughs> We had a lot of things going on as grandchildren. And me being the youngest, I kind of got put up to a lot of things. <laughs> At any rate, um, I remember a situation where I was told that there was going to be a party. And it was late in the morning. And I got up, I put socks on, and people were laughing at me, and by people I mean my cousins, and I love them so much. <laughs> I remember Granny coming and telling me to get back in the bed because there's no party going on at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I remember the next day, I think I remember and that. Granny pulling me to the side, and it's almost like I didn't really remember even then, but as the day, the weeks have gone by, I've remembered that she spoke words of encouragement to me that you're, you're not always gonna be the little one. But I remember her also giving me influence as well. And as I got older and matured and went through things, I kind of strayed away from my grandmother. But as I strayed away and went through the things that I went through, I started to come back to her towards the end, and I'm so grateful for that. Because there was a moment in time a few years ago when I lost my father, and there was some time where he and I didn't speak, but we were able to get back on a cord towards the end. So I value that, that in the end, when I was able to actually be able to reach out to my grandmother and be there for her, as much as I knew to be, we had conversations I, that I will never forget about things that I never thought she would talk to me about because I was always the youngest. Well, obviously, there are more children that have been involved and added to our family. So I'm not the youngest anymore, but in the back of my mind, I always remember being the youngest. And with that being said, the things that we talked about and the things that she instilled in me I will never forget that and I will always take those memories with me because she was a very strong woman. She went through a lot and I remember one of the conversations that we had towards the end was that she was tired. And although I'm not very old, I would assume that when you're tired, you're tired. And there's nothing that anybody can do about that. And as much as she would have maybe try to tell us about things and us caring about her because this is real. Flesh is a serious thing because unfortunately, a lot of times people feel that they have to Im impose their feelings on you because they love you. But at the end of the day, that's her road to hope. And I accepted what she told me that she was tired and as much as I know everybody wanted her to do something different, in that last conversation that I had with her, all I remember her saying is, Brandy, I know what you're telling me is right. 
And I know that y'all love me, but I'm tired. So I gained strength in that. And after that, I didn't question her anymore. I didn't say anything else about it because she had came to grips with what she needed to do because she was a woman of God. And because of that, I didn't have a fear in my heart about where she was going. I didn't have a fear that she was going to be in pain anymore because I knew. With my father, we had time. We didn't think we had time. But the time that we got, I, I tried to make the best of it towards the end. And I tried to do the same with my grandmother. So with that being said, although I was the youngest and I'm not the youngest anymore, I want to say goodbye to my grandmother and know that she led the life that she was meant to lead. And with that, she gave me a great gift that I will never, ever discard or forget. She also told me, don't accept no wooden nickels. <laughs> things in my life that uh, 